And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at the search for Planet X. And so this, the whole thing here is since 2016, astronomers have been looking to figure out if there's some planet in our solar system that would help explain why some of the things are the way they are, so in some of the rotations. That's an interesting concept, and that's what this game is about. This game is a logic deduction style game in which you are trying to figure out which of a certain number of sectors has Planet X in it. And you are doing so, you can play this by yourself or with other people, trying to be the one to get the most points. Not even figuring out where planet X is, but where some dwarf planets and asteroids and comets are. It is a very strong deduction game. It requires a companion app, which is free to download. Here's how it plays. The board has two sides. There's an expert side, which is what I'm showing you, and there is a basic side. And you can see here each, this is the basic side, has only 12 sectors, and then on the other side it will show you the advanced side. And actually, there's a sheet here depending on which side of the board you're sitting. So it rotates. So this one here is if I'm sitting on the sun side. And since I'm sitting on this side here with the flower, which is the spring, I would use this board here. Well, actually, I would use this one since I'm playing with the advanced one. I'm trying to figure out where planet X is. Each of these sectors could have anything inside them. Well, not quite. There are two comets in the advanced game, and comets can only be in the sectors where it shows a comet. So I know there's no comet in sector 14 and 15. There's also rules about the different things. So asteroids are always next to another asteroid. So if I find figure out there's an asteroid in 17, I know there's an asteroid in 18 or 16. And so there's four asteroids total, so there's either two groups of two or one group of four. Dwarf planets are in a band of six. So if there's a dwarf planet in 16, there can't be one in seven. In fact, one, two, three, four, five, six. There can't be one in four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and so on, because they, there has to be a band of six of the dwarf planets. Also, if, there's a, if I find a dwarf planet, I know that planet X is not adjacent to it. Gas clouds are always adjacent to at least one truly empty sector. Planet X is not adjacent to a dwarf planet. And truly empty sectors, um, well, there's nothing there. Now, remember, and then this is an important part of this game, many times when you search for a sector, it will say it's empty. That means it's either truly empty or it could be Planet X. So Planet X looks like it's empty, but it's not necessarily truly empty. Now, these are the basic rules that apply to every game. For that, you're going to be using an app. So when you play an app, one person will start a new game mode. So let's say I want to play expert mode and I start the game. It gives you a code for this game. So you could use just one app for everybody, but if everyone wants to use their own phone or what have you, you can type in this same code and then you'll continue. You will show which side of the board. So I'm sitting on the spring equinox side and then we'll pick a difficulty level. Now, so let's say I pick beginner. What this will do is it will give you a bunch of information that you'll know at the beginning of the game. So here, for example, I know Sector 2 is not a gas cloud. Sector 5 is not a dwarf planet, etc., etc. This is just extra information that you will have at the beginning of the game. And then you'll start the game. This will tell you about research and conferences. So everybody will write this stuff down on their sheet. And we'll come back to research and conferences in a bit. And then the game begins. Now players are going to be taking turns in this game based on whoever's farthest back. And when you take a turn, it's going to move you a certain number of sectors. So maybe let's say this moves me two sectors, and purple goes, moves one sector, blue goes three sectors, red goes one sector, and so now it's purple's turn again. So then purple might move one sector, then red goes one, two, three, then purple goes two, then yellow goes, so blue might not get to go for a while. And the actions that you do are going to determine how many sectors you move. The actions that you have are survey. When you survey, you are going to be looking for a specific object. So let's say I want to look for dwarf planets. And I'm going to look for them in a range of sectors. So they have to be revealed. So you can see right now on the board, we can only see sectors 1 through 9. So I might say I'm going to start in sector 1. And I'm going to end in sector 9. 
That's going to make me move two spaces to survey these. If I survey in fewer spaces, let's say I want to search from just sector one to sector four, it's going to cost me three to move. The fewer spaces that you look for, you're going to help narrow things down. So then I would survey. And it would say there's no dwarf planets in sectors one through four. Well, that's pretty good information. I then move my person three, and my turn is over. Target is much more specific. Target says, I want to know what's in sector seven. And that cost me four to move because it's very specific. And this tells me there's an asteroid in sector seven. Now, you can only do target twice over the course of the game. Players have a uh, token to help with that. So you have to be careful when you use these. But it gives you some exact information. Research lets you pick one of these six subjects to research on. Now, you are not allowed to research two turns in a row. So if I research one turn, I have to pick a different thing next turn. But what research does, let's say I pick gas clouds, it gives you a new rule for this particular game. For example, all the gas clouds are in a band of seven sectors or less. Uh, let's say I researched comets and asteroids. No comet is within two sectors of an asteroid. Let's just keep, let's uh, look at... Um, Gas clouds and comets. At least one gas cloud is adjacent to a comet. And so there's all different rules, and you're going to write these down, this information, hoping it will help you figure things out. Now, when you do the surveys, and whenever you do any of this, everyone knows what you're doing. So I can say I'm surveying one to four for asteroids, but no one knows what the answer is. Same thing it is with research and targeting. You're going to keep doing this. At some point, you might say, I know where planet X is. And I'll say planet X is in sector 9. But then I need to tell you what's in sectors 8 and 10 next to it. I'll tell you exactly what is in those spots. And there, of course, I failed. If I succeed, that's going to trigger the end of the game. Now, there's a few other things that are going on. This board, the revealed sky, will move at the end of a player's turn. It will move if there's nobody there. It moves to whoever's in the last position, and it moves one space at a time. There are two conferences that take place over the game. When you get to a conference, everyone's going to go to that conference. So this one's Planet X and Asteroids. Planet X is not, is not within two sectors of an asteroid. Everybody gets this information at that time. The other thing that happens is we have what's going to be peer reviews. And when you go here, each player is going to be able to secretly put tokens on the board of their color. And they're going to put them in sectors. And that's they're basically saying, I know what's in this sector. So maybe I say, I know there's an asteroid in sector three. So I put this here. Nobody else knows what I'm doing. And every time you hit one of these, these tokens move in. When they meet, get to the middle, and they move in every time we get to one of these spots. When they get to the middle, we'll reveal it, and at that point, everyone's going to find out if it's correct or not. So I'll say sector three, and I know that sector three is that. Let's see what happens. Nope, it's wrong. Now, if it's right, that's good for me and for everybody else who also put one there. Everyone else will reveal. If it's wrong, I'm going to be moving forward one. So, I kind of as a so you just don't randomly throw them out there. But at the end of the game, they're going to be worth points. And in fact, I've just told you everything about the game. At the end of the game, you are going to get scores based on many different things here. When you discover Planet X will give you quite a few points. And you can try to figure it out on your final turn if you want. Um, if you're the first person to find these correctly, uh, the first person to find each one of those will get points. If you discovered these correctly over the course of the game, you get points. And you'll add all this together and whoever has the most points win. There's a good chance the person who discovered Planet X first will win, but that's not necessarily guaranteed if other people were correctly guessing stuff over the course of the game. So this board is really only used to keep these tokens on and to move your pieces around. The pieces are neat. They're different observatories um, here. The board itself has this piece set in the middle. And let me show you the other side, just so you can see what the standard side looks like. Uh, the sheets are nice, although I'm going to be laminating mine, as I do with most of these type of games. you got quite a few in here, so you're going to be able to play the game. And you can play the game solo. The different shields here tell you all the information about stuff. And in fact, there's this card that just 
fits in here that will you put in for the difference between an advanced game and a basic game because in the basic game there's only one dwarf planet in the advanced game there are four of them and also yeah that's and there's also more truly empty sectors in an advanced game but this tells you what the turn overview is how theory phase works um, locating planet X and the game end and scoring and so there's a lot of good information in this the app itself is pretty basic. You heard the sound effects on it, you know, and at the very end, when you're done with the game, you end the game, and it will tell you what's in each of the sectors. Now, you say, Tom, you're spoiling this. Yeah, I'm spoiling one of, I don't know, how many hundreds or even thousands of games, so it's not that big of a deal, and you could even, you know, I could play a game and send it to you, and you could play the same game. We can see who does it faster, I suppose, um, but the components for this game, they have a very... The whole thing is a seriousness to it. It's not silliness. It's actually about trying to figure out where Planet X is. The rule book's really clear. Very good components. I really enjoy the search for Planet X. It is likely one of my favorite deduction games. The research and the laws and the rules really do my heart good. I love looking at the, the thing, and uh, as you write your notes out, and you'll have a bunch of notes here, you'll write what the other players do, and, and I'll come back to that in a bit. But I love, okay, so this planet has to be in a band of six, and this one's opposite that, and if that one's there and this was that, that, oh man, the, the crunchiness of that deductiveness is really not matched in many other deduction games. Most deduction games are pretty simple. Who killed who in what room with what? You know, the clue type of thing. This one is, I'm trying to find out one thing, but using a bunch of rules. Now, there are some very strong positives to this game. One, the app is great. It gives you a bunch of, you know, it's infinite replayability in a sense. Even if I played the same one, let's say, 100 games later, I played the same one. I wouldn't remember anyway. I wouldn't remember all the different rules because the rules all sound similar anyway. The advanced side is infinitely more difficult than the other side. And if you play with no starting information, it could take quite a bit. But they're solvable. And even in, this is one of those games where even if I don't win, if I figured out where Planet X is, I won. I don't care what everyone else did, you know. I feel pretty confident about that. And... This, that, that strong deductiveness there is, is just fantastic. Now, I do think there are a few small things that keep this from being my favorite deduction game. Uh, one of those, and, and these may not bother you, um, so one of those is the interactiveness with other players is barely there. Yes, the main thing with other players when you play this game is when they do those research and the tokens get to the middle and you reveal them, that can give information, although that information is given to everybody, right? Which is fine, and we write that down, and that certainly helps and, in fact, has caused me to solve it. But, I mean, that's it, it, a computer player could do that. It doesn't feel like I'm necessarily playing that person. But, but what I really mean is... I write down faithfully when I play this game. I write down faithfully everything that everyone else does. You know, they write this down. I'm like, okay, they did this. They write that down. I did this. And I write down. But I'll tell you, what the other players does does not help me figure it out very well at all. Because it's another level. So if Susan says, I'm going to survey sectors three to seven for dwarf planets. I'm like, okay. So, Susan, look for dwarf planets from sectors 3 to 7. I haven't done that yet, so she must think there's one there. Or maybe she thinks there's none there. Then Susan puts a token out. I'm like, okay, now I can combine those two pieces of information. So she must know something. I Maybe I'm just dumb, but deducing or inducing the information from what other people did very difficult, especially if they do the research. I'm looking up the asteroid rule. Okay, well, that's not helpful at all. So, uh, that's not a big deal, right? I just, after a while, I'm like, why am I even writing down what the other players do? Now, I'm sure there's some very smart people out there, and, oh, yeah, that, that's really helpful. But I would wager, for the vast majority of people, and everyone I played with has said that what other people did did not necessarily affect their deducing of where Planet X was at the end of the game. Uh, also, the research action in this game, which only costs one, and you cannot do it every turn, and that's good because I guarantee you, every time I play this, I will be taking that action 
every other turn. Getting all those rules and helping have all those rules in place is really a big deal. Um, and I almost feel like one is too cheap for it. I almost think maybe it should be one the first time, and then the first two times it's one, and after that it's two. I don't know. But I just felt like that was a really powerful action. Another powerful action, and this is a positive, is actually saying, this sector, I want to know what's in it. And some people will scoff at that because moving four in this game means you might not get to go for a few turns. But if you know what's in one sector, you figure out a sector you know nothing about, if I can figure out what's in one sector, that can really help with everything else. Because I can then use all those rules I gathered and say, okay, well, if there is an asteroid there, I know the asteroids are in this band, so there can't be asteroids here. And if there can't be asteroids here, and sometimes a, a whole bunch of dominoes can be. And it, I would be hard-pressed to not do that action over the course of a game. I really enjoy this. I, I mentioned some things that I found slightly negative about it, but I want to be clear that my enjoyment of the game is vastly beyond that. I like it that much. One of the positives of the game is if someone else makes a mistake, it doesn't affect me. I'm interacting with the app. So if you're like, you know, many games ask someone, does the character have a mustache? And they say yes. And later on they're like, oh, I meant no. Oh, man, all my notes are messed up. Here, if you mess up your notes, it's your fault. And I love the rules. I also love the very seriousness and coolness of the theme. This is something that's like based on actual stuff, and I really enjoy that. So overall, I think this is an excellent deduction game. I tend to lean towards these games. I tend to, to, to enjoy games that are really crunchy and very thoughtful. And this is one of the best of the lot. Great theme, great deduction, uh, lots of replayability. I prefer the advanced side just because I think it's deeper and more thoughtful. But the other side works well, too. You can play it solo. So many positives. My only negatives are, like, I don't know that the other players matter that much. And that keeps it maybe from, yes, there's a race to be the first one done. But well, I guess so. You can still get points in other ways. But that's very minor. And at the end of the day, if you like deduction games at all, then this one better be in your collection. That's the search for Planet X. I'm Tom Vassell. We'll see you next time. Dice Tower Judgment. Excellent.